Hey guys, good morning. Captain Brad Goodrich here with Marlin Magazine. We're here at Harbor Town Marina in Fort Lauderdale and we're going to show you a couple different ways how to rig a swimming mackerel. Okay guys, here we are. We've uh, slow thawed our bait in a brine so it stays nice and tough. We're going to start with the prep here. I personally like to break the back, which breaks the cartilage away from the backbone. Some people like to use the deboner and actually remove the bone. I personally have found that that's not necessary for us on some of the boats that we fish on. You want to get this mackerel nice and limber so that once we finish rigging him, he's going to swim and look as natural as possible. After we got him good and loosened up all the way down to the tail from the head, he's got a good wiggle to him. I like to pop the eyes. I use a deboner tool because it's fat enough to get the entire eye socket out in one shot. Start on one side, we push it all the way through. You can see you get the entire eye out, set that aside, flip the bait over, run it through the other side one more time just to make sure we get any of the excess membrane out of there. I like to start with about a full arm length of 70 pound floss. I prefer the heavier floss because it rides the bait a little bit better. I, put the floss, I fold the floss in half, I send it through the lead, and I like to run the lead up towards the loop end, you can see there. This is very similar to a floss ballyhoo rig, except we're using a mackerel today. I take the floss loop, and I'm going to place it over the head of the mackerel, and just slide it right in behind each of the gills, one on either side there. We're going to nestle that lead right up underneath the chin of the bait. Make sure we pull our floss good and tight, which will help secure the lead. And we've run both tag ends through the eye of the needle. Now we take the needle and we're going to run it dead center up from under the bottom jaw of the mackerel. And we want that to go centered through the very top of his head here. You want to make sure that you get it directly in the middle so that the bait pulls true at the finished product. We're going to pull this all the way through. You want to pull that nice and snug. As you can see there, it's dead center in the mackerel. Okay, now I remove the floss from the eye of the needle and I like to tie two overhand finish knots on the top of the head. This is going to not only close the mouth, but it's going to help secure the lead up under the chin. I personally like to do two knots because it bulks it up and it's going to give your hook a more bulky space to grab a hold of, something more substantial. Now that we've sucked down our second overhand finish knot, we're going to take one leg of the floss at a time and work through the eye socket one way and then again the opposite way with the other leg of the floss. Now we've run each leg of our floss through the eye socket of the bait. We want to pull those nice and snug. As you can see there we're essentially creating a V, or some folks would call it an X, on the head of the bait. We're going to roll the bait over. We're going to tie a single overhand knot behind the lead. Suck that down nice and tight. And this will help close up our gills. And then after our single overhand knot, we're going to go with another finish knot. Both legs through the middle there. We're going to suck that down tight as well. This will help close our gills and keep our bait from washing out.
The next step for me is I like to remove the peck fins in order to help the bait try to swim true. You're going to be using these baits in various different sea conditions and various different speeds. So a few adjustments can be made down the road, but this is just a standard, simple swimming mackerel. Now that you've clipped your peck fins, your initial stitch, you're going to want to run the needle right through the knuckle of the bait so that it gives the stitch something substantial to grab a hold of. One through one side. We're going to roll the bait over. We prefer to use the bitter end of the needle when coming back through the other side so that you don't mess up the floss from your initial stitch. You take your second leg and you want to run it back through the other side here. Now you have a stitch going through either side of the peck fin of your bait. Next we're going to take one leg of our floss back into the needle and we'll begin our belly stitching in order to close up where the bait was gutted. Our first stitch is going to go from the knuckle to the other side of the bait and you can make these stitches as deep or as shallow as you like just so as to not penetrate the main meat or the backbone of the fish. We're going to go fairly shallow here work our way down the belly. Personally we don't like to pull these stitches overly tight because it enables the bait to be a little more lifelike and natural having it swim a little bit better without super tight stitches. Come all the way down to the anal fin work our way back up. You want to leave yourself enough floss when you start this process so as you work your way down you have enough to finish your bait. In this case it's better to have too much than not enough. So we have a short tag end and we have a longer tag end here. I'm just going to clip our longer tag end to make it more even with the short one. And then we're simply going to tie another single overhand knot and one more finish knot to suck it down and hold the knot tight. I like to have that compact directly in the center underneath the bait. Clip your two tag ends and now we're just going to apply a hook. Take your circle hook or whatever size and material leader that you'd like to use that you're comfortable with, given your location and your seat condition, you want to run the hook sideways one way or another, personal preference, behind that double finish knot and in front of the V on the head. And there you have it. The hook is sideways through the bait, and she's ready to swim.